You're watching episode 70 of Let's Talk Geek. In this week's show, we are talking about the My Broadband Conference. We're solving Rubik's Cubes using a Samsung Galaxy S2 and a Lego Mindstorms kit. And we prod My Broadband founder Rudolf Miller's brain on the topic of local loop unbundling. Thanks for watching. Welcome. Hmm? Hit the forum as well. Cool. I posted the forum. It, it, there's already something in the forum. You posted it. Uh, I posted it off topic. Uh, off topic. Cool. I'll do that. Yeah. Cool. Can I? Yeah, hit it. Because right, sure. I'm going to get into you first. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 70. Uh, with us today, we have Jan Vermeulen. What's up? Rudolf Miller from our broadband. How's it? Uh, Johan Els. Good you afternoon. Uh, and, of course, the mixer, who you won't have a picture of. Well, you do, but it is the uh, the the the, the that, ever present the of a vendetta mask. official picture. Yes, uh, the, the 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 correct picture, unfortunately, as we said, would would break all the cameras. Uh, the, picture, <coughs> the picture comes up as a four or four error. Ah, That's so we did upload idea. it. We tried. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to go into the random? I see it's your random you've added in again. Sure. Um, we can do the random. Um, the Septuagint, if that's how you say it, there's a little audio link clicky thing, uh, is an ancient Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. It's referred to in critical works by the abbreviation G. It was originally the designation of the coin Greek translation of the Pentateuch. That's the first five, bu- the fi- first five books of the Bible, the, the Moses' books, um, also known as the Torah. Uh, but came in time to refer to the Greek translation of the whole Old Testament adopted by Christians, incorporating the translations of all the books of the Hebrew Bible and books later considered apocryphal or deuterocanonical, some composed in Greek and some translations. So and I got to this because... I going to say, how, how is this related <laughs> to 70? 70? 70 is LXX in Roman numerals, and uh, the Septuagint is also referred to as LXX. Oh, okay, oh. cool. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> Again. <laughs> cool. Did they ever raise enough money that they're going to stay on air? Wikipedia? Yes. yes. There's always some benefactor who donates like a no, billion bucks. I'm just asking because, I mean, they were running that campaign a couple of months ago where every page you open, they were asking, please donate. Yeah, please Jimmy, donate. Jimmy Wales always manages to get the money. Okay. Um, so did he actually, did, did they officially say, okay, well, we've got enough money to now be sustainable again for... A year. They normally they okay. normally do fundraisers every year. Yeah. Right. And I think they keep on doing it every year just, just because they want to keep so even if they make for two years, they still run it every year just to keep the momentum sure. going. Sure. And if they get extra money, I think they then just expand the dev team to try and get more features in. Sweet. Well, the thing is, if anybody out there ever wanted to test your skills at SQL, um, just go actually into Wikipedia. They've got the SQL tables to download that you can actually um, build your own wiki, offline Wikipedia version. Um, the statements are pretty simple. Inject, and then they say build indexes. <coughs> All right. And that's where uh, the server goes. Cool. I just want to just give a quick rundown of our guests this week. Uh, we have Rudolf Miller, as, as we were saying earlier, um, who I'm not exactly sh- sure what, what do we... The, the, the person who created my broadband. Founder, I think it's good. Fa- founder, <laughs> founder, that's the word. For yeah, beautiful word, man. <laughs> good, good. Um, do you want to just give us a quick rundown? Uh, we, 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 how did you start it? What got you into doing that? Um, t- yeah. In 2003, uh, ADSL services were poor and... We told Telcom, please fix it, otherwise we're going to get everybody together. And they didn't fix it, so we got everybody together. So it started, uh, uh, really started with a forum, and then uh, later on the thing grew into... To, to, to what it to, is yeah, today. Absolutely. And I, I must say, you guys seem to be doing quite well. I know you guys were quite involved with the LOU hearings last week, which we're going to talk about a bit more. And you guys, you see, whenever there's a lot of tech, you got, your name is mentioned quite often. Yeah, so it's good doing news, well. man. No, wait, you can't leave it there. What platform did you start on? What was the first? Did you actually start this a forum? This is a geek podcast. Uh, for, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it certainly is. Uh, we, we actually started with uh, ASP, with a forum called Snitch. Yeah. So, but it was purely a forum. So we just wanted to get everyone together to share experiences. Because um, in those days, it, it sounds strange now. Um, especially with all these social media tools. But in those days, if you call in to tell them, you say, listen, my line is slow. You didn't know it was, if it was only you. The, there was oh, yes, really no yeah. way oh, true, to ascertain yes. whether, unless you maybe use chat lines, but ascertain, is it only me or is it, is it a widespread problem? Okay. So when we started the forum, everyone said, obviously, yes, uh, it's very slow. And when we take slow, it took the daytime speeds of 5 to 20 kilobits per second, it was really slow. And okay. um, so uh, people came there. Because and it originally started as my ADSL. Indeed. Yeah, and yeah. then it grew into my broadband. Yeah. And, uh, 
and in 2004 we we migrated to my broadband and uh, so uh, initially it was purely for the ADSL uh, ADSL crowd and because it's the first broadband service was launched late 2002 but uh, really in 2003 it started to take off when I say take off thousands of people um, well, there was a huge demand and you guys felt the need um, uh, there was it's, it's a, I guess people wanted to discuss it uh, discuss broadband but in that in that time um, it wasn't great I mean the ADSL now is is excellent. It's still the best broadband connection you can get. But in those days, it's um, we would use dial-up during daytime to access your email account because ADSL was too slow. And um, so, yes, there was a, a, a tremendous amount of pent-up anger about oh, the service. And um, so people flocked to it. And But then, obviously, the landscape started to change. And from what we've seen currently, I mean, Telcom is a, is a different company from what it was back then. Mm. Yeah, you can see they're starting to make changes and starting to yeah. progress finally. But they still seem to have a decent army of lawyers to back them up, though. E- yeah. yeah. Wait. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but then just to come back to my broadband, I mean, how many, how many people have you got to registered on the forums now? Well, um, I, I think in the, in the region of seventy to 80,000, Jan can actually check... Uh, Online, registered yeah. users, registered users, but uh, it was probably over hundred thousand if you if you take everything into account. Must but there are lots of uh, there are lots of people just just lurking. So monthly we get about a million unique visitors to the site. Is that now so the forum site or the or the, the total site? The total site, and, and uh, the forum makes up um, of page views served. We serve just over six million page views, uh, or serve over six million pages. So I'd say about. Uh, it's probably about sixty percent of that goes to the forum, and uh, the rest to the well, most of the rest to the news site. So, the news site. yeah. But uh, many people, most most people who go to the news will land up on the forum to see what these guys are chatting about. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, every story around has got the link. Certainly. So, uh, quite, well, and you can also get a lot more back back information. I find from there, um, even to the point where I know whenever I'm looking actually for some settings for my phone or anything like that, the forums it normally are, is. And Google picks it up, and it's also the one that actually has the correct answers. Yeah, no, uh, it is. It's, it's, it's great that we've got so many. I see Janus has opened 93,000. Uh, 248. 48 right, members no, registered. Wait, probably 49, just short. No, I mean, just quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, okay. uh, another question is, uh, did you, have you always been hosting out of South Africa, or did you actually start overseas? Um, I think we've never moved overseas. We always uh, hosted in South Africa. And um, we initially started on just a shared account, a few hundred rand a month. And um, because it was ASP initially, we had to get a Windows host. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we got a bill. They never measured our traffic. And then we got a fat bill for one month. We were shocked. And that's actually when advertising appeared on the site. So up to that stage, it was just funded out of our pockets. um, But then they got the first bill with thousands of rands. So we got a fat shock. Um, And then uh, we we started to create more of a commercial entity to to sustain it. And we've never moved. I think from there, we moved to Hitson, and then we stuck... uh, I mean, you've always been locally. That's good. I mean, we we didn't really, as we said, while we could afford it, um, because uh, hosting prices came down significantly now. Um, But in those days, you were talking about nearly 30 cents per meg. So it was, but we got a a far better rate from from Hetzner. And uh, so really helped us out. Uh, But it was still expensive. Mm-hmm. So it, it came down, but we felt while we could afford it, be local, because if there are international uh, connectivity issues, people could still go to the site, uh, post stuff, uh, and, and share experiences. And, and I remember in the, in the old days, there was connectivity issues overseas quite often. And, so, and then that, the first place you go to was my broadband to see mm-hmm. what was going on. And, and there was the local-only bandwidth issue, where yeah. if your cap runs well, out, your three gig, you know, your magical three gig cap from Telcom, you had infinite local cap. I yeah, it's, it's, you had uncapped, uncapped local, but still, local was cheaper as well yes. and it's still cheaper so uh, you can still access the sites with local mm. only and, and yeah I mean, international problems with Ticom I can't say it's completely disappeared has it <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> not quite <laughs> you don't lose total connectivity yeah, yeah. nowadays um, <laughs> but it's quite good it's, it's quite nice to know because I know it's, it sounds like yours must be that it's allowed for the growth of, of, of the things that have come which brought down the prices now eventually as you guys have been finding there's been more demand for it which has allowed you know even us to now be able to host locally um, uh, uh, I'm trying to work, say this correctly. Um, by you guys hosting your sites locally and stuff like that, you funded the people who are providing local hosting, which eventually, as they grew, has then allowed everyone else to cheaply host locally, which is starting to eventually, you can see the infrastructure of local applications actually come about. Okay. Uh, and at local hosting, it is sad that most uh, or many of the largest uh, blogs in South Africa are hosted internationally. And it's, it, it really is – it shouldn't be because mm, it costs yes. everyone money. Because you're starting to use international bandwidth there and back to pull, 
pull information. So it, it costs the telecoms provider, it costs the, um, the user extra money. And the, uh, certainly those bloggers don't want to host internationally. It's a far better experience to host it locally. So I think we will start to, to see sites moving back. I hope so, especially with MWeb's uncapped hosting. Yes, that, that, yeah, that's sweet, isn't it? Well, we're using that. I must say it's, it's what's allowed us to stream locally and all the rest of it. And you can see immediately there's been an improvement in the quality of the streaming because now your, your, your lag time's gone um, and it just works better. These, it's direct bandwidth, not anything going on, CCOM or whatever, some slight delay, it, it just keeps on working. Mm. Um, so it's very, very cool. Yeah, I think Let's Talk Geek, for example, great news that you can host because, I mean, what we serving text, uh, you serving audio <laughs> video, which <laughs> yeah. is, it can sting uh, <laughs> yes. if you get a bandwidth bill, isn't if it? If it wasn't for the in-web uncapped, there's no, there's no way. It's just you, you couldn't do yeah. that, unfortunately. But thankfully, we can nowadays. But now, I mean, you've now also started the My Gaming site. What, what's in the future for My Broadband? Where, where are you taking this? Where, 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 what is your short term? Yes, man, to keep head above water, that's my short term <laughs> goal. Uh, no, okay, it, I, I know in the next seven days there's one. one yeah, no, the, the, but, but the, the conference is yeah, just eat your time. I think people underestimate. I mean, you guys are involved from Let's Talk Geek. And for those who don't know, that uh, Let's Talk Geek will be streaming the conference live. And it's, it's, it's quite a task. Um, I think to, I've to, mentioned to, that before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, once in a while. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I did mention this before. What, that we'll be streaming? Are we streaming live from my broadband <laughs> conference? And those Is that don't, can't catch it live, they can catch a rebroadcast on channel 319 of DSTV hmm. um, the Friday and the Saturday. All the times and schedules will be posted. And should we say you might still be able to watch that? And we hope to be able to we'll be, be streaming, streaming that as well. Streaming that as well so that you can... Not just if you don't, if you're not only available on uh, DSTV, you can watch the rebroadcast as well. But still, please join us for the live stream because uh, we don't think Aki will be available on the rebroadcast. So if you want to see a brilliant presenter, please be on the live stream. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you mentioned this before. <laughs> Once or twice. Once or twice. Um, and we should also have iPad streaming working. So if you guys have iPads, um, last night I got the, the, I still need to test things, so it might, might still be, but by next week it should be rock solid. Um, but that's working as of now. That's excellent so news, man. So it's a, yeah, the conference obviously is big, and we've we've received quite a few uh, registrations. It will be the biggest this year, and this year at least we've got uh, a bigger venue. We've got the dome instead of the Talk Five Hundred, so we can seat a and thousand. Just to clarify, the dome is still in Voda World. Yeah, it's a Voda Voda Dome. Maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> we can. Yeah, maybe yeah. we must say it clearly the Voda Dome. Yes, and, inside uh, of Voda, Voda World, World. Yeah. or the Vodacom Dome, or whatever they're calling it. Voda, Voda World, Vodacom the, the dome inside Voda World, yeah, Vodacom yeah. World. So yeah. I think you're going to have some confusion. Because I know I was confused. In my head, it was at the Coca-Cola Dome. <laughs> and then they all corrected me. Like, no, no, no. Uh, so I hope all the guys actually end up pitch up at the right dome. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> would be a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, and, and we should, as I say, we've got, we received quite a, uh, quite a few registrations. So it um, should be a good event. Nice speakers. And uh, Ugh, Don't sh- shoot yourself. It, every year it's a good event. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's, great. Well, that's why it's growing every year. This yeah. is number how many for my broadband? Number seven. Yeah, number seven. Uh, and you started the first? Yes, yeah, the first one was actually while I was still at the university. So we, uh, I promised him a few things, um, including a, a conference that was uh, prominent. So that's the first one we held at the auditorium of uh, UJ. Mm-hmm. And um, a fair success, but n- nothing to the degree that it is today. It was a small, a small event, quite intimate and quite nice, uh, but uh, obviously it's grown since then. So uh, this is now the sixth year that we'll have it at uh, Vodacom World. I would love to, to actually see photos from that first event. It would be like one of those cool, you know, you put up some queen... <laughs> You have like a slideshow. <laughs> you, 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 want, you want the montage as, as, as it go, goes forward. Yes. Um, what's that new well, Facebook? I've got, I've got access to the AV. So if you've got, if you can just get the photos, we'll make sure that we, we put it on the AV. Uh, I, wish, I wish I can. Get, I don't think. Well, I don't in those days, we, yeah. In those days, the digital cameras, cameras exist yet. <laughs> so I guess that's a question. So, I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, anyway. no, it's a, it, it really was a small, intimate event, and um, we learned a lot since then. But since then, it became prominent, and we could get all these great speakers, uh, the CEOs oh, yeah. of companies. Uh, we normally love the comments out of the RC channel, but this one I really want to highlight. that they, they, It has been pointed out there's apparently a dome in Cape Town as well. No, no, it's just We do not have, have a, a dome, dome in Cape Town. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Cape Town does have that They ICC, do have a mountain. Yeah, they do have that ICC thing, though, but that's way too la da for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, good um, luck. I hope it's going to be but successful. 
Should be. And that's just next week, Wednesday. I, I think you guys, you I know the email went, so you're closing registrations. I'm yeah, not sure when. F- end of, uh, let's say over the weekend. Please, yeah, last year we sat with a flood of registrations the last two days, so we won't be able to accommodate them. So we, we're making plans for overflow rooms. We're, again, thankfully that uh, Johan and friends can uh, helped us out last year because the venue can get full. So there will be an overflow room, but um, please just register that we know uh, how many people will arrive and you can pre- at the pre- event. Prepare yeah, yeah. and everything. There you go. Cool. All right. Um, other things happening. We have the Tech for Africa conference. Mm. Yeah, it's happening over the same pit, the same time, actually. Uh, it's a, the following two days. It's the 26th uh, and then the 27th, 27, 28. 28th, Tech for Africa. Yes, yeah. Um, and apparently that was also very, very good. Um, uh, what is this about? Does anybody know? Sorry. I don't actually know the speaker lineup of Tech for, Tech for Africa off the top of my head. It wasn't I, nailed down. I, I must say, I, I haven't been following this one that well this year uh, last year we, we did follow it just been a bit crazy there's been 20 million events happening the past two months but basically it's uh, a couple uh, they've got get some international speakers and some local speakers mm-hmm. and they're talking about uh, technology um, I know la- last one last year's one I think it'll, it'll quite a Twitter you know um, social media spin to it I'm not sure what, what the uh, specifics of this one is but I, all the guys who went last year was very very good um, and they're trying to replicate some of the conferences that you get in America the, what's South by Southwest, South by Southwest is what they're marrying themselves what I just wanted to mention is, is they describe themselves as a sort of South by Southwest for Africa okay. so for those who, who, who know South by Southwest that's the kind of feel that they want to no, but now, they make. these guys have really got to check these calendars I mean go to start date see who's lined up before you and don't pick the day after. <laughs> and, and, and we must apologize. We haven't added Tech for Africa to start as we will, we will be adding it shortly. Uh, are you guys going to stream Tech for Africa? We can't no. go. We, 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 have, we have real jobs. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. like young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on the 27th, I mean, on the 27th, you're at my broadband. Uh, 26th. On the 26th. Yeah. Okay. Please um, do me a favor. Don't arrive the 27th. <laughs> I might get your, fired. Your employer <laughs> might be a little bit upset. Um, <laughs> um, also, I think they've got a different, I think, uh, digital, I think of the podcast name now. I haven't subscribed to it, then I listen to it. It's more marketing that they, they, the, the podcast people doing, handling that one. Okay. I mean, with a lot of these things, we generally also, it's either we, we know the people and then we, we've offered, um, or if it's not people we know directly, that they've we've got to make a request um, and then we'll we'll gladly help well, them course, if we can. Yeah. Um, and I know with these they haven't asked, so we haven't. And we've just been busy. We've just had like something Since on every are, single week yeah. recently. So it's just trying to balance and juggle and, and occasionally things like this. But mm. we're hoping as time goes by, we can do more and more, and we get a bit more streamlined. Mm. Um, and then we work out exactly uh, how to do it. Do you guys fund it still out of your pocket? This T- whole totally says? at the moment. Yeah, noble mobility for the women. Some of my employers have been donating some of the hardware for of course, some yeah. of these events. But other than that, the labor is, is a labor of love and the, the bandwidth is more a bandwidth out of the pocket. And, and uh, we, we, we pay for the server and stuff. So at the end of the day, it's a good thing because um, somebody did say in the past, when you start getting too many donations, they could actually start dictating what you can and cannot do. I mean, looking at the local loop earrings, if, if, uh, it's maybe a good thing that we were totally independent and gave honest coverage of the whole event and not being... Yeah, otherwise, somebody's stream may have been scrambled. Don't know what's happening here. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, but hope half this thing is um, we wanting to get these services starting. So it's still quite a new thing for this country. Um, you, there are some guys you can see streaming, but we're trying to get that the local streaming is streamed out of South Africa um, and it's done by us and all the rest because we've got the technical know-how and we can work this out. And sort of continually giving it out overseas and stuff is, is to start getting the guys to work on how to do it and building the skills locally. But it takes a while. You, you can see this, especially the last, well, it's just suddenly gone crazy and we, we've been doing more. And you've got to, I'm sure you saw, you've got to build slowly and as you build more, you add more features and you get better and you, you eventually get there. Um, and we are ho- hoping to eventually get there. But well, cool. Good news, man. Um, other thing happening is G South Africa, which is the second and third of November. It's it's a Thursday and a Friday. It used to be on the Wednesday and the Thursday. It has moved. Yes, I know, but isn't it four and five November? Quickly check. Sorry, uh, I'm pretty sure. But yeah. it's the Thursday and the Friday. Thursday and the Friday. Yeah. We will be there as well. Uh, the first day is going to be more the business one. So that's uh, Google AdWords or the rest. And the second one's a Dev Day. Mm. Uh, Are you going to both days? I'm going to both days. Okay, I'm actually. Uh, one, I want to be there. I want to move for the business stage to learn more for for less 
for, for the Let's Talk Network and see that. And the Dev Day, I want to go just because it's going to be fun to work out what you can do and play. I know the guys last year, you guys had lots and lots of fun being there. There better, oh, be, Nexus, so there better be Galaxy Nexuses for everybody. I'm just putting that out there, Google. No, uh, what's it? Ne- uh, yeah, is, oh, Galaxy Nexus. I keep on wanting to call it the Nexus Prime again. Yeah, yeah. I think a Nexus Prime so is you all right. Yeah. It's the third and the fourth. I do apologize. Second. And then, oh, November, three and four. So the Thursday and the Friday. Okay, and then I was wrong. I thought I have it for the second and third. Ah, close yeah, okay. We'll be anyway, there on the Thursday cool. and the Friday. Anyway. Um, the nice thing about this one is gonna, we're going to be able to take the car train. Because apparently there's a bus running to Newtown. So Very cool. So that's something that Orkies actually checked for us. So we can all travel on the car train to get there. That could be a lot of fun. Look, the nice thing about uh, last year's event in Cape Town, and that's just uh, Google, probably Google, they greet you in the morning with techno music, coffee, filter coffee, and sweets. These bowls and bowls of sweets. Um, I, I Astros, see you guys. <laughs> I, I tweeted a couple of those photos. Flipping marshmallows, but there's a whole table full of... So where everybody else gives you like muffins and rusks. No, not, not Google. They give you these bowls and they keep them full the whole day. But sweets sound like the right food for Android though. I mean, yes. donut, cupcake, froyo. Gingerbread. Gingerbread, ice cream sandwich. <laughs> What's the next one going to be? Jay. Jelly tots or something. They yeah. can't go brand. Eh? I, I, hope, I hope it's not yeah, because Jello is a brand. J- Jelly tots is a brand. But froyo is apparently a brand as well. Is it? Mm. It's a shortening of frozen yogurt. But apparently there's a, a brand frozen yo- for you. Cool. I don't know. I'll have to anyway, check it out. I'm going to move, move this along quickly. Yes, uh, do you guys want to move. quickly talk about the next phone? It's in our show notes for later. But while we're chatting about it now, sure. I mean, and, and there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of announcements lately. Um, and um, there's actually two Android devices that were announced this past week. The, the most prominent was the Nexus, the, the Galaxy Nexus, which everybody was calling the Nexus Prime up until the final final specs were leaked by NTT Docomo. Mm-hmm. Internet Solutions, I just want to say thank you to your parent company um, for leaking the specs. Um, and um, so, yeah, it, it turned out to be a, a fantastic looking device. I would have really well, loved to see a, a call, like secretly, you know, they somehow managed to get a call out processor in there. But, I would have uh, liked it. Well, looking at it, though, are you that I, I'm, I'm, it's great for but I'm still a bit, and I expected a bit more. What more did you want? Well, it's five megapixel camera. Thank okay, you. just give I us guess. a spec. Give us a spec. Um, Five megapixels was fine on on previous generation devices. Though I, I speak under correction, but the iPhone 4's camera is fantastic, it's, and it's and it's five megapixels. Yeah, but if you look at all the ones that it's even the, the Nexus S2 has an eight megapixel camera. Okay, all, all the current ones. So it's sort of it's it's good, but it's it's almost like it's three months behind. Yes, uh, except we, we, for the the the, the pro, well the processor. Well, the, is still the, a the, the, uh, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm right. reading the story on my broadband about the comparison between the uh, 4S and the Galaxy yes. Nexus. How are they fitting a 720 by 1280 pixel? The screen is screen. almost 4.7 inches. It's as big as your HD, right? Or how big is your HD? Also 4.3 4. Point something. 4. Point, what? I don't remember. I mean, remember. so many pixels in that screen. That's, isn't that 720p? Yes, yeah, 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 it's so 720p. 100p. Exactly. Display on a, no, on a cell phone. Yes, my goodness. Yeah, but remember, everybody thought this about the iPhone 4 with their Retina display, which was almost, almost HD. Well, cool. So, so since you're on, let's go quickly. It's basically a 720p screen, 5 megapixel camera, 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, 32 gigs inbuilt, no SD card capabilities. That's under debate. I couldn't find confirmation on those oh, specs, okay. but people have said that the GSM Arena specs have said SD card, but I've not read any confirmation. That's all right. I've got confirmation. Cool. Uh, 1.2 dual core TIO map, uh, mm. 4, 4 double. Yep. Double four six zero oh, one gig RAM, which is quite nice. HSPA plus and LTE. Yeah, and for those and for those interested, um, the the GPU that comes with the TI OMAP processor is PowerVR, which means it's not going to suck. And it's also dual core, if I understand yeah, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, the PowerVR just, is nice and quick. Just to come back about your your comment on the camera, if you look at seven twenty by one seven twenty p. Yes, that's nine hundred twenty one. So it's a one megapixel. So yes. already the five megapixel is going to give you no, look, HD recording. I'm not saying it's a bad yes, it gives phone. You HD recording, absolutely. And this is my one. But if you compare it to, let's say, that you've got other ones, like the Galaxy S2, the Droid Rays, and the Station Exxon, which is all, all eight, all of them, uh, the, and like they're the out already. It gives you that you that you don't really have on anything else. Is, okay, A, it's supported by Google, so you're actually going to get updates time, mm-hmm. ti- in a timely fashion. And B, it's got near field communications like the other cool. Nexus device. Um, look, it does have a better screen than the other ones, and it will be able to record HD. So yeah. it's 1080. But what's the battery life going to be? Be like on a thing with them, 
Well, apparently, HD screen. I, I, what I've read, it's got a 1,750... M- Which is not better than most of the other things out there. I mean, yeah. power battery. Look, exactly. when you've got a screen this size, you, you've got a lot of space behind it to put the battery. So hopefully they've used a lot of space to just... Oh, put but the how thick is it? Yeah, it's, you, it's, it's, uh, it's not a chunky device. Yeah, if it's not chunky, you don't have so much space. True. And you've, well, all you've so done is you use more space for a thinner battery. Yeah. Well, look, it looks like... Yeah. And then the other Android device that, that was sort of drowned out by mm. Google's, because there was like a lot of hype around Google's announcements, was Motorola's Razr. For I those saw that, that remember, thin, hey. yeah, sure. the Razer was Motorola's clamshell, which was like yay thick, or maybe a bit thicker. Maybe I'm exaggerating. But it's, uh, it was a clamshell device that, you know, the, those ones that you flip open. Mm, and mm. it was ridiculously thin. And um, Motorola rode on the Razer brand for years. And then BlackBerry and iPhone and Android said, how's it? And Motorola hemorrhaged market share. And they had to do something. So they're resurrecting the Razer brand um, and launching the thinnest, the thinnest Android smartphone or the thinnest smartphone yet, which really at this stage of the game isn't much of a claim because well, two weeks from now, there'll be a new thinnest smartphone yeah, yet. Having said that, it's quite nice. And I actually have uh, one, of, one of the uh, go, go, uh, people in the office that happens to be female going, great, no, because for them, yeah. she can put it in her pocket. And SGS2 is also a nice thin phone. But, but the, however, when you've got a screen that's 4.3 inches, you probably want to still put it into a case. You, you, you've got to actually see how thin this, even with the case, yes. it's thinner than... than but but this, this, the this whole thing, is, even from the MacBook Air time, um, if you've got a device that's rather large, do you really care about how thick it is? It's really not going to... Yes, it's a confident in my pocket. I've got an iPad. If it was just like one millimeter thinner, it, I could have put it well, in my pocket. It's, it's not really going to work that way, is it? doesn't matter. I, 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 this is what I think. I thought that. And for me, for me and, and I think every here, we, we don't care. But you're saying... With tight, th- tight jeans... <laughs> or maybe with and, tight jeans. Yeah. 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 For, for females... It's actually, yeah, you, you I, don't want that. Yeah, I guess for tight, I've never so thought of tight jeans. We don't want to want to not discourage that, not <laughs> <Yeah>, do <never. laughs> we? Make them thinner, make them thinner. Yeah. Talking about the phones. But I, I would personally just prefer thicker battery, isn't it? Yes. Uh, even I mean, if it's heavier. I want the longer, heavier, longer yeah. battery. And, and that sort of, and that to me was one of the, the, one of the draw cards of the SGS2. Not that anybody else doesn't do like an extended battery, but the, the, the Samsung Galaxy S2, you could have a back, you could have a different back plate on. You could get a new back plate with a thick battery. So the phone is already light. So now you put in an extra battery. Now you make the phone a little heavier so it weighs as much as a normal phone. And with a bigger back plate, so it's as thick as a normal phone. And you've got like a massive battery improvement. But that, that is sweet, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like an extended battery for, for a laptop, isn't it? What, yes, exactly. Yeah. What they did say, though, I think, with the Motorola is you can't replace the battery. The Motorola? The, the uh, Razer one. Okay. And they, I remember some other guys chatting. I need to just double check that they were correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they say it's basically you're not going to be able to replace Unibody the battery. design kind of thing. Yes. So you can't do that with this That's one. That's dangerous on an Android device. The amount of times I've had to battery pull an Android device. Yes. Anyway. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think they all have this problem. All of them say, and, and I must say with the new, new, even the iPhones, I've had to reset my iPad once in a while. Sure, but you can reset them. You don't yes. have to battery pull them. I've had it that my, my HTC sensation crashes in such a spectacular fashion that uh, I, I'm push and hold the power button and nothing happens. It's, okay. just, locked on, it's just locked on the screen it was lost on. So. And, and then having the bat- longer battery life might actually be a disappointment. <laughs> See, that's no, why they didn't have the longer battery life. It's because they were needed to run down so you could <laughs> Wait reset. five days oh. before your phone goes off. All right. Um, okay. The next thing uh, we want to talk about is Gate 1. It's a in your browser. Yep. Um, I must say, just check this out. It's incredible what it is. Yeah. So I think, I think the thing to do here is just to paste the, the links and stuff into the IRC and put it into the show notes and let people check it out for, you, for yeah. themselves. Really, it's an SSH client that runs in your browser. And it's purely in your browser. It uses HTML5, HTML5. HTML5 so it's using WebSockets. Um, it's actually p- uh, pure JavaScript and HTML5. No plugins. This guy didn't actually have any external other JavaScript libraries and it's a full SSH client got uh, bookmarks um, it's actually more powerful than, than the average SSH client well you're talking course. like putty in your browser yes, yeah. yes. but like even but actually user friendly I mean I, I don't know when you use putty but that thing is <laughs> <laughs> what? there's nothing wrong with putty uh, putty the, is I so like the best SSH client out there. No, the best, no, no, the best SSH client is a terminal yeah exactly CLI <laughs> sitting behind the server in any case 
I just wanted to add. I mean, I see he's actually released a source code. So mm. Mm. you understand it's it right? You, you can take this and put it onto your web server and... Yeah, and he says you can pull it into other applications if you want it, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, just, it's very cool. Just for the very well, security... One, one thing I didn't check with this, does this is your browser making SSH connection out, or do you make a connection to a web server and then out? That's the only thing I couldn't work out. Yeah, yeah, that I haven't been able to, to mess with yet. Um, but what I did want to discuss a, uh, a little, maybe, is, is on the higher level. Now we're talking um, about developing fairly complex apps purely in the browser. Yes. In HTML5, in JavaScript. Um, and as a, as a, as a you know, ex-dev, you know, seeing stuff like that, I, I'm looking at, at HTML5 and I'm going, it's not really built for this. And JavaScript, ECMAScript is not really, it, it's to, not really made to, to, I mean, they're shoehorning rich apps into the browser because it's an easy delivery mechanism. Um, but isn't this where the, the Dash programming language, I think it was Dash, that uh, Google's dot, released, you dot, mean, yeah, dot, you mean Google's Dash, thing. now become dot, Yeah, yes. but now that's not HTML, I mean, it, it's not HTML5 as far as I know. That's it, a whole new programming language. It, it's supposed to fill side, right? in, well, HTML5, it, it, you're talking more, it, it's client and server side. Okay. So this will actually run in Chrome. Okay. So you can run it client side. It's slightly more Python based than JavaScript, but it is a, it's supposed to be what they're trying to push an evolution to JavaScript yes. to allow better programming language basically in the browser. Yeah. The problem is, is it's driven by a single company. Um, so like, for example, what Opera have done, um, uh, talking about pushing rich apps to the browser, is the Opera CTO is one of the, uh, mm -hmm. one of the uh, original um, writers of the CSS spec. Yeah. And he's now uh, uh, done a, you know, submitted a proposal. They call it an editor's draft. Um, to the uh, W3C to uh, have paged browsing, amongst other things, um, straight in the browser. So no, I mean, right now, if you want to go do that, um, you know, you can do normal page one, page two, but we're talking about swiping to page. Yeah, but I um, read this thing. I actually didn't like it. It's basically, it's reformatting your, your browser page. That's now this long scroll that I now to work. I can scroll everything. Now they want to make it page. Yeah, but it's not, the, the idea is not to reformat it. The idea is to be able to just enable it with CSS. So... Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure I like it either, but my, my thing is, is all of a sudden you're doing something that apps have been doing. Apps have been doing this for a couple of years now. You know, uh, if you look at Flip, Flip whatever, on, on iPad where you read your news, um, they, they've been, you know, the Flipbook. Or Flipboard. Yes. Well, Flipboard. But I, what, what I'm yeah, saying yeah. is you, you can actually do that now currently with JavaScript and... Yes, with JavaScript. What this does is it does it in like less than five lines of CSS and it's done. So that's the trick here, and, um, and but, so but but why would you? Is it is it merely for the touch screen devices? Is that, that is, that's what it sounds like? I mean, they, you can do it on desktop, but I don't see myself doing it with a mouse. I mean, this is really something for for paging a website. Like but why would you? Do, why why not would just you want to do it? Okay, I know for yeah. years a lot of people are falling back to Flash. Think about it; they're falling back to Flash when they actually want the page, especially the page length and stuff, to be specific. They actually want to do a proper printed book like. So you want to fill your website. screen and that's it. You, you want no scrolling in, in any way. Yeah, yeah. So maybe this is a way for them now to get back to controlling the size of it. And I know there's some JavaScripts to do that. Mm. But that's where if you go and look at some of the high-end studio-based, especially the movies and stuff, they still fall back to Flash because of the fact that they want, to know, they want that credit to be at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And for them, the easiest platform to do it is Flash. Now, if they can control a page layout within a browser... That's that's going to help a lot. Yes, I can just see a I flood just, of horrible websites. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's, that's where happens. people are, are and, feel they like must be the first one to push out a website uh, like this. All where happens. it's going to use is um, the guy's going to do to push more advertisement. Can I, you know. Yeah, because that, that was one of the things. I guess that you, you flip, but there's a fat ad. You must flip oh, again. Exactly, and, and that, that's one of the things they actually pushed. They're like, for I mean, now they've got all the journalists in this room, right, for for this announcement, and they go, "Hey, you guys with websites that are ad driven, how would you like it if you could display your ads like in a magazine? You know, half page. You sell them. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you can sell them by half page mm. and quarter page and full page ads, exactly like you do in a magazine, rather than no, by there's impression. Or, there's a model. I'm sorry. There's definitely a business model. But if, you, if you're thinking about the websites we use, no, you don't care. You want all the and stuff. I, I, yeah, business model will always lose out against usability. Always. People no, will just, make, just not use it. Um, and some guy will write a, job, a JavaScript plugin that will strip out. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and make it back to <laughs> a normal page. Page blog. Yeah, wait yes. for that. Back for to that come back to the story plugin. that you submitted, the SSH. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, just a question. So you take your our web server standing at MWeb. We load this software on no, there. From what I understand, if, uh, I could be wrong. So I just need to confirm this. In actual fact, this is something that runs inside your browser. Inside your browser. And it, the browser, it actually, if, if I understood correctly, it shouldn't actually need a second server. You should, uh, you should be able to run it off local host. It sounds like it's a web app because it's. But if I read through the right, comments so on the site, but it's, it's using web sockets now. That's the thing is I know with web sockets right. designed that you can write terminal, um, so like RSC clients just to correct directly to the RSC and have it live updating and all the rest. These of are pull scripts delivering the HTML code to your browser. So you're going to have to host it somewhere. Okay, that's it. That's why I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I, I haven't working. checked out the code, but. Um, no, if you go to the Git, but I mean, if you just read through the comments, you don't even, if you don't understand Git, these are all pull scripts that's delivering the HTML5 code to your browser. Hopefully from there it becomes an application, yes. So it actually will sit as an application and execute. Because my, my question was, if it is code running from a server, um, guys, it's going to try and test this. Just make sure you're running a, a SSL server. Otherwise, the logic yes. like totally falls over. Thank or you very a much. server that can make an SSH connection out. If it's like a Windows server, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't even test this on Windows, but yeah. <laughs> okay. But I- any um, Linux server should – this is actually – you now is session to a second server from that. You see, I was thinking a, a practical application is would be like our hosted server so that you don't have to go and look for Putty or SSH client or whatever. You can have a hidden web page that you open up and you actually just log into the local server. You can do it for that. So, so this will be able to connect to local host. And let's say now we want to also connect to our server in England or yeah. the one in America. You, you would then, from the same web page, be able to connect as well. So that's a very good idea. And I think oodles to this guy. And then obviously the first comment in the uh, – <laughs> I've got to read this. The first comment in this whole post from on the site, when is SSHD in HTML coming? I mean, for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well done, dude. Well done. So you want to SSHD uh, into my browser window? Awesome. I, I mean, uh, so I, was, I can uh, see a use for, for anyway. Remote, I mean, it's, remote it's, control my browser. Well, I'm, I was thinking at some point it would be very cool if, if browsers could actually almost be, which I know Opera did do it a bit, is that they their own web servers running um, like a PHP or something oh, that, like that. That, that freaks Cause, thing. Cause I you, tried it. It was a very good idea. You could then cool. eventually run this whole big peer-to-peer like websites theoretically with this, but obviously you open a whole bunch of security holes in doing that. But there is a, there's a very cool, some very cool stuff you could do if, if that was possible. Anyway, I, I should move us along. <laughs> yes, in, um, um, this gonna, is a geek show, so sorry if I want to get stuck on SSH. No, it's, it's fine. I'm <laughs> fine. I mean, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, SSH, by the way, uh, has a number of times, like on our web server, when I've had to do work and I had to FTP something up, it literally something, uh, you know, when it's a big web, a big web app of 600 mm. files that's got to like open and close, you know, open, upload, close, open, upload, close. It'll take me 30 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half sometimes if the internet connection is, is shocking to upload something. Whereas if I just zip the file, upload it to the server and then be able to unzip it yeah. on the other end, and it's done in seconds. Um, um, have you ever done a tar pipe? No. Your SSH? No. Try that. <laughs> Most tunnels available. SSH. <laughs> no, well, oh. you, you, you can pipe it in, into tar locally. Uh, well, from tar into SSH and out into another tar on the other side. So basically, it's basically making it one single stream. So it's not open, close, open, close all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can then uh, or you can just use SSH encryption for that, uh, compression for that. Yeah. And it actually works a lot better. Then if you add that and you use <laughs> rsync uh, with a resume, even if your your line bounces, you can just resume from then on. Sweet. Yeah, luckily I okay, don't have that stuff totally that's geek. nearly, nearly big enough. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you win. All right, you win. <laughs> Move us along. All right. Um, we're going to just go back into LRU since we have Rudolf here. And I know, uh, Jan, you had a couple of questions there that you just wanted to go over a bit more. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, I don't know if, if we want to uh, if we want to get into, like, uh, if it's okay with you, I wanted to start yeah, with a bit please, of PR yeah. exercise. Go for it. So I don't know if you want to answer that question. Maybe you should look over my shoulder first. Uh, before I <laughs> so no, let, let, let me ask it anyway because um, I work for my broadband we get to do a bit of PR now that we live on air so what gives us the right to claim that we represent consumers yeah we've, we've actually had complaints about the fact that um, what gives my broadband the right to say okay we represent consumers so and um, who complained let's indeed it's uh, but um, uh, firstly when I 
presenters, we say, we certainly, it's not my broadband or me. It's not our opinions that hold. My opinion may actually differ from, from whatever we say. But we ask guys, give your opinions. Consumers must give their opinions. And it's exactly those opinions that we took and put it in a document and submitted. And we have yet to find a better way to give consumers a voice uh, than do that. You see, if somebody goes in, let's say a consumer goes in themselves and try to, uh, to represent themselves at the, in front of a Casa Council, there are lots of legalities involved with that, although they can easily just do a, uh, uh, or, or submit a document of what they feel. You really, it, it helps to get some legal backing. And there's mm-hmm. where, where Ellipsis, where we partnered with them, which is a top regulatory firm, telecoms regulatory firm. So they were the guys that partnered. We just supplied the platform essentially to say my broadband's a platform you give your opinions ellipsis is a legal company um, that will will take these opinions package it in the correct format and then present it um, in the correct format to ICASA so it really everybody wins in, in this yeah. format makes it easy for consumers they can also explain all the legal terms to consumers before they uh, they submit these things because some of these things are technical you can't just uh, yes and it's quite nice also is, is you, you get a filtered submission so you don't get flooded with with submissions so the actual important ones get and also let's say you've got 10 or one so you get that one out and one of the one of the other that doesn't mean that the one is less important but because you've got somebody sitting there they can consolidate these 10 into one proposal and then still put time for all the others as well so you actually get a lot more throughput i would imagine with this as well yeah well and, and apart from that you get a, a stronger voice if you can yeah. say that uh, but for, on the important issues you'll get a strong voice because somebody may get sound sidetracked as you say on some small issue and um whereas here consumers can get a strong voice at ICASA, the right format you get the right people to speak at the event um so yeah it's not my broadband or my personal opinion and in fact i didn't even do the presentation i did a follow-on presentation but uh, the legal firm ellipsis sumaya from ellipsis did the presentation and it went down well and i think it's good to, because the, uh, the counter argument is as well how were consumers previously represented in any of these hearings now no apart from the my uh, from the my dsl ADSL complaint, which we presented, it never happened. So all of a sudden, consumers got a voice. So those guys are really taking stuff off. <laughs> as simple agree. as that. Um, and also part of it is you guys were willing to put the time and effort in. That's why you were there. And nobody else had done it. And Certainly. it was a fairly inconvenient time because I was overseas. Yes, it was. There was no one. I mean, we had one guy in the office to run two ships. Okay. Um, it, was a, it was a tough time. It was a very tough time. Wasn't that the week where the BlackBerry stuff happened as well? It was literally, it was BlackBerry LLU, BlackBerry LLU, BlackBerry LLU, the whole, the whole the past couple of months there's just been so many other things going on with everybody's been doing multiple things in one week yeah. so I don't know what, what it is about this time of year but it's, it's good as well because yeah I guess it keeps us busy but uh, <laughs> I would, I don't know, the breather will be good <laughs> looking, I'm looking forward so. to December um, the next question um, sorry is oh I see you moved them around that's cool do you want to no I didn't okay. somebody else moved it but someone, did, someone did so let's ask about that so there, there's a there's a, a feeling that naked ADSL will make ADSL more expensive. That's that's one of the things that the CASA councillors um, uh, brought up. You know, like, do your consumers realise that there's this concern? Yeah. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, it really depends on telecom. The the argument there um, is that. ADSL or, or more the line rental, yeah. 130, 140, whatever you pay in, in that region, is partly subsidized. It's an access line deficit. That means it costs Telcom far more to give you that line than that price. So the moment that they say, okay, you can get ADS, um, a naked ADSL, but we don't subsidize this line anymore, it's going to be far more expensive. Uh, what the other guys have said at the local open balance hearings is they don't believe it. <laughs> they say, show me the, show me the figures. Yes. Show me how you calculated it. Because it's easy to, to throw Same. in the, the CEO's bonus into, into, into access line uh, costs and then say this is what it costs. So they want to see how it's calculated. Is it accurate? Um, how, does, how do the actual figures behind this calculation work? And they don't believe it's as high. Um, but they have also said if it, there is actual a real access line deficit, we will be able to – or we will be willing to, to pay for it as long, long as it is reasonable. So that's the argument. Will it be more expensive? Well, also, what, what would be nice is to have it separate because I must be honest, I, I don't actually want a, a phone line coming in. I actually want that just be a purely ADSL line. Um, and I don't want to be subsidizing something else that I'm not actually wanting because if we do allow other people then to sell the, the naked ADSL, the rest of it, I want it to be a fair and even playing field when they're doing that so you, you actually foster the competition. Um, so even if I am paying the same amount um, 
and not getting the line. I want it to actually split like that so that you actually get an accurate representation of what, you, what you're getting. And, and interestingly enough, what you're describing now is exactly what the industry players have asked for. He said, sell me an ADSL line. And why do, do people get forced to take a telecom voice service. So anybody that wants to sell you a voice service, let's say Internet Solutions, Vox Telecom, all of these guys are trying to sell you a VoIP service. But why will I buy? Because I've got a voice service already that I'm paying 130, 140 rand a month for. Um, so level the playing field, as you said. What you described there is, is reasonable. Um, but then again, as I said, naked ADSL will only happen if Telcom wants it to happen. And in fact, local loop unbundling will only happen if Telcom wants it to happen. Yeah, and, uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have yeah. a way of, of stopping things from happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then one of the things that came out of uh, I watched uh, I watched your your podcast. Mm. Um, I wasn't here for that, unfortunately. Cool. Yeah. So I watched um, some of the some of the queries that came out of that. Is apparently there was a. Uh, it's a, a legal argument about whether Bitstream is a facility or a service, and I believe that comes down to the facility leasing regulations. Is that the, is that what it comes down? Yes, to? Uh, facilities leasing regulations will be how they will implement local loop unbundling to say ADSL or actually a fixed line is an electronic communications facility. Uh, people must be able to rent facilities, and therefore I can get access to the local loop. Um, and then there is an argument. Um, well, is, does Bitstream access fall into that? Now, there's a strong argument to say it's a service. It is actually not a facility. Um, and they, they went into deep legal arguments, and that, that thing, to, to define it is very challenging. What we do know, however, when it comes to Bitstream, Telcom has a Bitstream access called IP Stream, Bitstream Access Service. So they, they've been ready, or I've, we've been hearing about them ready to launch it for over a year already. We've reported on this I think at the beginning of last year yes. so um, it's, it's nothing new I, I personally think and I hope they hold it as a trump card and to say come November end of November here's Bitstream or here's our IP stream which is a Bitstream access service and the minister climbs on his pedestal and, and declares success Telcom looks good everybody wins as long as it's fairly priced it can actually make a big difference I can because one of the nice things if I understand Bitstream correctly because there's also lots of debate what exactly that is that allows a stream that's local to that exchange that, is that correct, or is it still similar to the IPC? Um, and it's far more similar to, to IPC. Okay. Um, so it, it can be at exchange level as well, but it will be, uh, it will be a less crippled IPC product. Um, it, it gives the, IP, the, the, uh, it, the, the traffic will be passed over, in, let's say, in a more of a raw format. Um, to, to the, so the packet simply gets streamed to the, to the ISP, and they will do authentication and so forth. So it gives them far more flexibility to develop new products um, on this service. So um, they, they won't um, really get access to the exchanges or, or have to put in – they won't necessarily, for example, put their equipment in the exchange. Okay. It's, it's not like it, – it, it, will, it will terminate at some point. It will be handed over to them, uh, but not with the same restrictions as IPC. All right. Okay, so it's not going to be if, you both, if you've got somebody else in the same – uh, hosting or ADSL provider, you won't be able to route directly via the exchange. So it was still central point and then, then back out. Yes, yes. Um, so um, but, pop, yeah. but one of the things that people have asked for is that currently you have IPC points of presence. They, they only had it in, in, in Gauteng at a certain stage and then they opened one in Cape Town now and opening one in Durban. But the problem, if you, if you have one, for example, let's say a guy in, in Bloemfontein uh, sits with ADSL, his traffic is still going to be routed via Johannesburg. And people ask for some uh, or more points and then more discounts for these points um, mm. in, in the different areas that, that uh, your traffic doesn't get routed via Joburg and, and also the discount um, there's an argument with IPC that you're paying partly for the backhaul so if the guy sits in Durban your IPC terminates in Johannesburg somebody must pay for this local transit from, yes. from Durban to Joburg but if you then open up an IPC in Durban you get something like a 5% discount and it actually costs you more money um, than to not have it. So if an ISP loses money um, by having a pop in, in Durban and Cape Town, there's no business model around it, and that must change. Mm. So then that's has got to do whenever now the guy he connects locally, now you want to fetch a web page from Johannesburg, you've got to route and pull the traffic all the way from there, which is then a lot far more expensive than if you, you just came out in Johannesburg originally. Indeed, but, but also uh, oh, let's take a gaming server from a gaming server perspective. If a guy sits in Cape Town and he wants to game on a Cape Town server, why must you recruit via Joburg? And mm. as I said, it costs the poor ISP money. Why must you route him... Cape Town, Joburg, Cape Town, that traffic 
must be paid for, mm. and it's unnecessary. And especially considering that local traffic is still some of the most pricey transit traffic in the country. It is. Uh, uh, it's costly. <laughs> Unless you peer, for example, if you take a strong stand, let's call them MWEP, for example, take a strong <laughs> stand and say, listen, I'm not going to pay for peering traffic anymore. How about peering with us? Or we both route internationally. <laughs> let's see how we cut off our fucking nose to spider. But no, uh, uh, MWEP did out. a good thing and it worked. Yeah, it's yeah. very hush-hush, but we all know they, they now, the last one has fallen, so they're peering very hush-hush with uh, Telcom as well. Cool. Didn't know that. It's good yes, news. indeed. It's, a, right. it's not a full peering yet, but... Um, yeah, but when you do the pinging... Yeah, if you it's ping, you see a, what the hell is not, uh, yeah, it's not hundreds of milliseconds anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, and mm. I was just thinking, speaking about gaming, having local local RPC Connect points is great because your ping times are significantly lower. Um, like I know we our server happens to be in Johannesburg, but if I connect with my ADSL, which connects there, it's like twenty one milliseconds ping times. And if you're in Cape Town, you've got your gaming service sitting in Cape Town. You don't have to route all the way up to Johannesburg and down, adding 20 or 30 milliseconds mm. to your gaming time. Wasn't there also a, a billing issue around IPC not being 100% accurate? Uh, that I don't know about. Okay. Sorry, uh, then mm, cool. I might be confused. All right. So I think we've covered uh, – I had a lot of questions around the difference between IPC and Bitstream and the benefits of Bitstream of mm. IPC, but I think we've covered that in mm. sufficient detail. Um, Celsius' defense of you know, and them going, no, 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 you can't touch our wireless local loop, was that they've essentially unbundled it already. Um, uh, that's the way I understood it from listening to your podcast last week. Um, so what's the story there? Yeah, th- that is an interesting argument uh, to say, listen, um, with th- the first argument is if, if you talk local loop unbundling or l- unbundling with, with wireless, somebody must use spectrum. So whoever you're going to give access to, um, they're going to use some of your spectrum and they don't have a license to use it, so they can't. So that's the first argument. Mm. The other one is uh, you can't really unbundle uh, the air interface because, as I say, that's, that's spectrum, but it's also not a, a, a one one to one point so it's not a line that you unbundle so and, and these people are going to move so what do you unbundle that you you can't say this is your connection because this guy is in, in three minutes he's at another tower so yeah. with another connection so what you're going to do is really route his traffic through um, the air interface going into the network of the mobile provider going to the core network and then hand it over at a certain point and they say that's already been done because there's a roaming agreement so the roaming agreement is essentially Local, um, or wireless unbundling. Um, so it's an interesting argument and it's difficult to find fault in it because you truly cannot give people um, a connection on a tower or connection. So you give them connection across a countrywide network. Yes. And that, that really comes close to, uh, to roaming. So I guess that's the argument. And um, the legal eagles may find, believe me, I've seen the telecom, they're masters at finding a small problem with that argument. Uh, so they won't find it with that one for sure because they all no. for not unbundling anything. <laughs> um, so, no, but no, 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 no. That's not what I said. Uh-huh. Their comment was that the whole proceedings. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I think the only thing they fall in bundling is Icaza. <laughs> 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 Anything with that have to change. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking what you've actually pretty much would have sound with, with the wireless look on it's pretty much an IP connect. It, that they discussed as well is not really because they said isn't um, an APN. Just the same as Bitstream. And, and some guys said yes, and some guys said no. Um, so they, they're not in agreement, these, these uh, cellular operators. So and, uh, that's a different type of product. A roaming they specifically talk about is, is – um, but the APN and the roaming, it, it, I think it will come down to basically the same thing. So when you take Bitstream, yeah, they've got an APN product for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they also hand over traffic. So you can use their network up to a certain point to hand over traffic. And can you really make it – um, can you get closer to the customer? Is it possible with the, the, with the mobile networks? And I, I think I find it challenging to see how you're going to do it. Is yeah, it the, it's a lot more complicated than, no, than it, just – it's not a fire, but it's not, it's not a yeah, – uh, Where is a guy going to install equipment? If I say, okay, I want to reach Tim, and um, say, where is he going to install equipment on this tower? But then you drive – if you drive to work, all of a sudden you drop your call. Now you must install it equipment in another tower. So, but then how is LC doing it? Because those towers don't belong to them. Not anymore. They, they, they rolled it out. Yes. Uh, in, uh, the way I understand it was completely done in debt. Um, and then they sold off the infrastructure to American Tower Corporation. Okay. So Celsi built that stuff with a lot of Chinese help. Um, because they, and, uh, I understood, and then they sold it. I understood that they basically said, well, n- nobody's stopping other companies to approach the same tower owners. If so, you have Spectrum. 
So is it a VPN type? Okay, leave the spectrum. I understand that. <laughs> is it then actually that the handset is making a virtual connection onto that rented tower into the service provider? Yeah, but that, that is the tower here. We must just split it. The tower is just a physical infrastructure. Yes. It really is stick in the ground, isn't it? Yes. Um, so there's not much else. So the equipment, everything is exactly the same. People don't – there you can rent – a high so site. what does Celsi own? Or what did well, they, they own they own the the, the infrastructure on the yeah tower. yeah the, the, the oh. base station okay. belongs to them. Mm. So that is where somebody needs to get into it. You can I think the problem is trying to equate it to a local exchange. So um, what because of this leasing thing, you're like I want space in your exchange exactly. Yeah, but no, where do you? As I say, the problem is, let's say you want to. Create a service. Let's say you guys, let's talk network. Decide, you know what? We're going to get into the telecom space. Hmm. Going to make some some bucks. I want access. So you put your equipment here at the exchange, back all via Wi-Fi to Terms House, and uh, you're ready. But as I say, the problem is you drive, and then there's an next hour. So you must really cover the whole country then, putting your own back all equipment and putting. Okay, so and, uh, how's the agreement with Virgin working then? Well, that again, that's just, just a roaming agreement. They hand over traffic. And that is what the guys are arguing. Okay. It already exists. Okay. You can do it. It's in virtual cool. mobile operators. Now, now, what's interesting is they actually brought up Red Bull Mobile um, when, I, when, I listen to, mm. when I actually listened to your recordings. Um, yes. They brought up Red Bull Mobile, but uh, Lars told us in no uncertain terms that um, Red Bull Mobile is not a VMNO. Yeah, no. They're just a brand that sells through Celsius. Yeah, no, let, so all of a sudden they use it as a defense. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's not fool ourselves with Red Bull Mobile. Let, let's not. Virgin, Virgin Mobile is that. Yeah. And, and let's not forget that Celsius roams merrily on, uh, on Vodacom. Mm. Yeah. And mm. Telcom and or ATAC are, roams on MTN. Yeah, so yeah. it already exists okay. in, in a format. So it's, a, it's an interesting argument. That kind of it's like, another comment made by uh, Telcom was that if, if local loop unbundling needs to happen, um, it also needs to happen for um, the wireless spectrums, uh, including the, the Wi-Fi spectrums, and as well as for the um, uh, uh, broadcast. I mean, that was, uh, I don't know if you guys picked that up. It was one of the comments that was made, that if, if unbundling needs to happen, it needs to be included for the Wi-Fi spectrum and broadcast. And I was like, as, as, as a broadcaster, what? <laughs> How would you like DSTV to now give you the last mile from a satellite sitting 300, what, 30,000 kilometers? Well, but that end. last mile is a few miles. <laughs> yeah. what are two miles? <laughs> it's not local. Oh, it's not, <laughs> last light year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there's nothing stopping people from doing that. No. If you, wanted, if you could go, if you had the money, you want to go rent space on a satellite for data, you could do it now. Yes and no, because the satellite, especially the ones that uh, multi-choice users are liable to tell you, <laughs> No more space. <laughs> no, <laughs> look, no, 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 except for that. But I mean, legally, yeah, you can, you can, you can actually, as with an ECN, an ECN license, you can, yeah, you can get your spectrum from your car and you can broadcast. Off you go. And, and, and here, says, in the regulations, there is a specific clause that says it must be reasonable. And I think there must always be, if there's no good reason not to give it. So there may be a good reason not to give it. Like the satellite's full. It's, it, that sounds like a good reason <laughs> to me. It's, uh, or um, go and buy your own. That sounds another, <laughs> like another good reason to me. Was there it? anything else you wanted to cover in this topic? I'm just going to move some switching um, sorry, the time. Yeah, the, the, the last thing I wanted to say um, uh, was that uh, th this is something that's come up, and we see it a lot uh, with people blogging about the issue, and it's, and it's understandable because these are complex topics. The truth tends to resist simplicity, as a famous vlogger once said. Um, but... Um, the, there are some guys now, you know, it's this, sort of presenting this as a new idea that LLU is not a silver bullet. And Telcom has, has said this in their presentation as well. And this is something we've written about extensively before, I think, that it, it isn't a silver bullet. Um, and, and people tend to, you know, uh, put down, uh, C, you know, they look at CCOM and they're like, oh, prices went down by so much. And now when WAX comes and when Easy comes and when all these other, the prices are going to drop some more when that's just not the truth. Mm. And the same is true for local loop and bundling. It's solving a problem, but not all the problems. No. And I, I think maybe the best thing about local loop and bundling, it can be used as a big stick to tell Telcom, give us better priced wholesale services. <laughs> yes. And w I hope this is partly what happens. So listen, well, this this sword hanging over your head. It can disappear <laughs> if you make the other guys happy. We well, see what the next step. What if if, if you make it th that they're not going to be complaining and they don't need to fight you in, yeah. in courts to get this, it's cheaper to just buy from you. Indeed. Then they'll go for that. And everybody wins, really, isn't yeah. it? Telcom will still make money on it. 
Right, okay. Cool. Um, I don't know if we want to cover um, ice cream sandwich and stuff. We spoke what did about you say? The- iOS 5 is out. Uh, I'm running it. It seems to work fine. I love the tab browsing in the, uh, the browser with on, on uh, iPad. iPad. You've got tabs now, so you don't need to uh, take your web page, go into this like nine blocks, select the next web page, come out again. You now just hit a tab and you're there. Uh, other than that, I haven't really tried it. What was very cool is I know on the iPhones, apparently if you've got another iPhone and you send an SMS to it, it uses the messaging system transparently and automatically so you don't pay for SMSs. Uh, that's very cool. So that that, is, is, that is sweet. That would be nice. So that's um, good. It's very cool. Um, my, my one thing with that is it's only iPhone to iPhone, so that mm. I still am a WhatsApp fan because of that because it will work across all of them. But if... I wish WhatsApp would do that because that would if you didn't even have to think about it just an SMS and somebody else on the other side could get the message it would yeah but that would be something that's a that's an SMS replacement yes so you need to replace the application Android application so yeah I'll give it some time I'm sure they'll think about it and uh, you've experienced no hiccups after the installation yeah. uh, yes I must say I use it my iPad more for pleasure so it's like simple browsing and um, I've d- I re- Tested an iPhone. They still don't have uh, HTML5 audio support. <laughs> but that's none of them do. Um, and but I find actually find my games and the stuff that I've been playing slightly more stable since I've done oh, the update. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I mean Google's. Um, uh, I mean it seems to be a, October is a big month. Uh, Google's released a new version of Android called Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, I don't know it's what's wrong released. with. Yeah, I just I don't know what's just what's wrong with ice cream. Um, but um, I need a, but ice cream sandwich. The source code isn't out, but the SDK um, I believe is immediately available. It's out on the uh, Galaxy Nexus. Um, but there's no talk of when the Galaxy Nexus is going to become available. Uh, when I last checked, sorry, the news moved so fast mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they might have confirmed a, a launch date for the devices already. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean it's. It's out. Uh, Asus have confirmed that um, Ice Cream Sandwich is coming to the Transformer. Um, so then the slider as well? We hope. I mean, it's, it seems like the two <laughs> is, is, a new trans- is there a new Transformer in the pipeline? I believe so. Um, there's, there's talk of a new Transformer, but I have very, very little details okay. about that. Isn't that too rapid? Guys, slow down. They've just released. I mean, or do they only like design to make 10,000 units of the first one and then... Let's move on to the next one. Well, I think I think uh, HP right. I wish they were paid only five hundred of the first oh, one. Yeah, okay, <laughs> <fair>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing is, these guys need to iterate. I mean, uh, the people say that about Apple products, and the only reason people don't complain about Apple products is because they make so few. But they release, if you think about it, they make one every year, but mm-hmm. your upgrade cycle is only every two. So I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, if you get so how long is how long is the transformer been now? Transformers been uh, well overseas. I th- it's just under a year. I remember January, February it coming out. Okay, yeah, it's not been a year, so it's just under um, a year. But also with these things, remember in tablets for for Android, they're still trying to work out what it should be. Um, okay, and, and in that, right. and I see so it's so it's still. Right. I think if they actually found like stabilized, like the phones are pretty much stabilized. You get if you buy a phone at once, it's also once a year. But there's like a new batch that comes out once a year. Um, with the, the next upgrade. Okay. Um, and I think the tablets okay. will get there. They're just iterating through to find the right. And I think that's the Ace, Ace slider. For, when I look, it looks sexy. It's starting to, to get there. But now they've got, the, it's mostly going to come up with the Tegra 3, which is the quad core processor in it for games and stuff like that. And if they don't do that, everybody else who's going to come out with that is then going to beat them. And all that momentum that built up from people now wanting the slider is going to be lost. Yeah. Or, sorry, Transformers. Yeah. So um, I know Hawkeys is in the IRC going, ah, oh, ice cream sandwich is so much more exciting than iOS 5 and we really need to move on from this topic. But um, when I looked at the, <laughs> when I looked at the, at the website, you know, just to try and get an idea of what they had changed, I mean, it looked like they made some very basic changes to the, the I mean, the look and feel. It looks, it looks I mean, the, there's a lot of changes to the look and feel, in fact. It looks very slick, um, but without having used it, it's very difficult to make a judgment call on that. And then they made some changes to the to the um, photo, the, the camera application. Come on, uh, so photo uh, face unlocking, and face unlocking, and, uh, and <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, there's cutesy features. You want to like unlock that. your phone? Hold it up. Hold it up to your face. Oh, you must be kidding. To recognize your face and lock Do you know, it's because it's like you get all these passcodes and swipes, and to me, that's just too long. Now, if I hold it up, if, as I long as it's comment. quick. Comment. The mixer just pointed out something for me. So on a grumpy day, my phone just won't unlock. 
Or, or, uh, I won't be able to shout at anybody. I was going to say, in the mix of corn uses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Hawkeyes is already going at me at RSC, obviously. So he's like, notifications got better, uh, maybe. Uh, home screen got better. Widgets, they've got... Um, widgets are now resizable, um, which, is, which is cool. Like out but the that's box. on the Galaxy already. It's on my Galaxy. Uh, yeah, but that's probably a, a, a home screen or a, or a, a launcher replacement uh, that, that okay. lets you do that. So... Um, so, <laughs> you know, he, he's going to slap me the next time he sees me. App drawer got better. I, I don't know. I, I think they made a bunch of a bunch of incremental They've changes. They've taken a lot of t- stuff from Synergy Mod and just implemented it in the <laughs> yeah. ice cream sandwich. <laughs> I, 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 I'm using the latest Synergy Mod. No, that's that's a bad thing. The more people just use stock Android, the better for yes. everybody. <laughs> and, and then just have all the like home screen replacements and stuff downloadable from the App Store. Mm. Please, pretty please, with an ice cream sandwich on top. <laughs> and also, well look, I, I, I want them to steal. Sorry, to yes. steal from each other. Yeah. I want, I want the best. I want Android to go. Okay, this year, what, what worked in iPhone, what works in Nokia, what works in this, what works from all the other. At least put all the, the really cool stuff into this phone. Mm. And then, you, and, and then after that, the lawyers have a field day with papers. Fine. By the time yeah, I, I know no. that's good, but it's going to happen anyway. No matter By what the time they do. they're done, just release your next version. And, and then <laughs> I want iPhone to go. Oh, those things are cool. Let me we seal those and then innovate. Just continue innovating okay. on top of that. That's a bit. not a bad idea. That's why maybe Asus got a good plan. Make fifty thousand, tie that up in court. <laughs> With Apple, and just make it release your next version. So the time that gets tied up, you just keep on going. <laughs> this is fine. That stock sold. <laughs> but this is a sad. This uh, one guy in the office said today that um, if there's a patent, whatever, and and Apple has, the, they have a few good patents. Uh, the company has, has done well in that in, in researching. But even if you come up with that patent as an own idea, let's say whatever it is, swipe to open or whatever the, the thing may be, you can't come up with it by yourself. And then implement it, and that's maybe a problem with these with these things. So uh, all research, uh, um, even if you put in the same research as Apple, you can't do the same things. Yeah. And I think this for tablets, it's going to become yeah. uh, very important because uh, some of these, if you start to to uh, to patent gestures, which has happened, it's, it's a problem. Well, never mind that. Like that, they've also sent to point Apple's almost in some countries patented a rectangular phone because that's how they've got yeah, some of the. Uh, the um, Samsung's ban. It's pretty much we have a rectangular phone. You know, no one else may have a rectangular phone. It's like, but all phones are rectangular. No, no, but we, we did it first. Re- it's it's sort of it's, you know it's gone. Oh, we painted it first. Yes. Yeah, like... um, so I think it's there are advantages to patents, mm-hmm. but I don't think that actually are those benefits that are there are actually even vaguely yeah, being used or being realised, and they it pretty much being misused. So it, it does need a lot of fixing and, as well and I, I agree completely with you it's nice like in the academic world you, you really build on whatever other guys have done to improve the, the user experience and so forth and patients just mess all of that up so I'm 100% behind you to say this is well, maybe it keeps innovation steal fresh. all good ideas well, let's say not steal it take it well, still take all good ideas and put it in your thing and then the most innovative company will win at the end yes. that can implement these things the best whereas currently it's a uh, a strong set of lawyers are necessary to to protect all of this. Or patent a power button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Thanks, RC. That's good. That's absolutely. Then you bug it. <laughs> no, you better don't patent the power button. Patent the power cord that you plug in. <laughs> Char- patent charging. Oh, there we go. No, that's that's good. Uh, anyway. Because I can see BlackBerry, uh, the next iPhone, sh- there's no button. So it's what power button? You shake it or you... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so, okay, sidetracked again. Anyway, uh, okay. I wonder if we shouldn't skip over that uh, topic and go straight to the BlackBerry topic. Yeah, I'm just going to mention IS Fiber to the premises, the trialing, which will be too expensive to be uh, realizable. Cool. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that. Why? <laughs> I uh, want so fiber. Much for that. <laughs> so much for quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want fiber. But Why don't they just go into a suburb and actually go and find how homeowners that will put in a little fiber switch, run all the fibers into there, and from there run it into the exchange? It's your, your cost um, lies in getting the fiber from the curb, from a point of presence close to your house. 20 grand plus to get it to you. Okay, but okay. So let's let's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to move along quickly, but you opened a can it. of worms. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is a this serious topic can of actually, so Why can't I hang? Let's let's look at it right now. The copper wire is not are not underground. So why does the fiber have to be underground? The copper yeah. wire coming into your house right now is hanging. Here we go. 
So why can't you just hang the fiber next but, to it all the way up? Again, I, I don't know what the legalities are behind it. Can you just hang fiber? Yeah, well, can you? It's obviously you there's the fact that it is. Fiber. Yeah, no, no. It, it's not the 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 technical part. Can you just decide to do it? Um, well, uh, or do you need uh, permission from no, you need, you need uh, local permissions and stuff? Uh, well, they, they sit but already the, with a major problem. But the problem, no, but I think the problem is right now, everybody's thinking about putting 20,000 rand to get fiber into your house. Yes, if you change, if you just uh, well, hang it, the, 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 they say even. But then the second argument that I do have with copper, yes, you can go from your neighbor, a little copper wire, to a little point, and you bridge block it in. What chrono block, yeah. chrono it in, and there you go. You can't do that with fiber. Okay, well, but that's what I'm saying. You sort of can do it with fiber. Look, it's not quite as chrono block, so you need slightly more expensive equipment. Okay, I what can I'm run saying is fiber to my neighbor and then from him to the next person and then from him to the next yes. person. And every time you, 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 you join them, that there's costs involved and it's going to get – but that's what I'm saying. If they actually just go into a suburb and you take one street and you get one central point where you can put on a fiber switch yeah. and then run the fly leads into the switch okay. from there no, – the, now, that model has been discussed, and, and people in, in very areas, um, in many areas have said that there are actually little places where you can put it, for example, on the wall, walls between the, the houses. You can run little poles and then run the fiber there, and it, it goes on to. So, but this is where they're in exploring models to say, <coughs> is there a local provider which will do this, and you give me a, a single point of presence that I connect? Yes. But here you have to work with, with small providers and who's going to do it. Yeah. Telcom is certainly not going to do it. I, is, I doubt it's going to do it. Neotel, because it's difficult to work with these new guys because who do you call when you've got support problems? Um, and, but these models are being investigated. They are actually looking at exactly what you're describing to say, to, but they're not going to do it. Some neighborhood guy is going to say, very well, similar to that, the WISPs, very similar to the WISPs. Isn't that exactly what mm. Celsi was impl implying? I mean, if you really wanted to, if I, I mean, Maybe I should just try it. You go around to all your neighbors, put out a little fly and say, we would like to investigate fiber. Who's interested? Mm. Get all those stakeholders together and then say, when you've got enough people, you can do this most. Fiber as a technology is not sorry. that expensive. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, he lives <laughs> down the road. Oh, I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that figure that gets thrown around of 20K is a single connection. Yeah. And it involves well, changing. Well, if I go you from don't have this, to change No, fiber. what they said is they're very willing to put that box, that central box down. What they're saying is for them to then provide from that box into a house. No, they're not talking about that box. They're talking from that box into the house is where the 20 grand comes in. How? Uh, yeah, just it's, it's, municipalities, it's, dealing with the rights, it, it, putting poles up. And then it, it, it is challenging because if you look at the estates, um, let's say, because your argument, oh, for example, yeah. um, then your argument can be extended. Some estates have fiber already. Our yes, estate yeah. has fiber. People are struggling to build a business case, even with an existing network uh, connecting all houses. It's I, not that easy because people are not willing to fork out a grand plus, even if you throw DSTV in. Okay. It's a strange. I don't know why not, but they just not. They don't see. It. They say, well, Especially you know what? Considering the DSTV is like six hundred bucks, isn't it, a month? But I don't think people equate it like that. So you give a, a one size fit all service, um, and. Uh, I will personally, if somebody tries to sell me DSTV currently over my uh, broadband connection, I'll, I'll wait for my neighbor to trial it first. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't want our network to go down, and this is exactly what happened in our state. The network goes down, and, and they don't fix it on a Saturday afternoon. So on Monday, you'll get it again, but I can't watch. Uh, so, rugby. So, I, so let's start a new go. one. Yeah. I got to work. Let's start a fiber user group. I was thinking about that. Right. I, I'd love to. Yeah. Let's go. For and it. You're, you're run as a cooperative, which means that you can actually get around, because I know that Steve Song was talking about, about that. About running cooperatives. In a so. cooperative. Mm. If you run it as a cooperative, uh, there's a lot of, of laws tax. that actually protect you and give you a lot more rights. Uh, to do things like um, building these networks and buying these licenses. So. Not a bad idea. We'll start on Monday. Uh, uh, don't, don't <laughs> no, no, no. Not this year. There's too, much, <laughs> there's too much going on this year. No, uh, sorry, I, I had a little anecdote, but that's, that's for another time. We can tell yeah. them another time. Let's move All on. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to do this one very quickly. BlackBerry Altich saved lives. Uh, they're talking about, there was a, I, I see here, 40%, but a 20% drop in traffic accidents in Dubai. Uh, when BlackBerry Altitude went, because people weren't watching their phones while driving. And the guys that had accidents, they couldn't call 911. Well, what's a. <laughs> well, you could still they, they, they take that. You just couldn't oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you could be. <laughs> we can't okay, okay, make sense of that. Telling us. Again, I mean, how many, how many accidents do they have? I mean, has is it, is it, is it gone from like two to one? 
No, sorry, 20%. So instead of 10 accidents, they've now had eight accidents. No, I've actually heard in Dubai there's actually quite a lot of accidents. I've heard okay. the same. The guys are quite, they speed, so uh, they're and quite they, fond they of the dro- big truck driving very fast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I'm just uh, generally trying to BBM while driving. Is, <laughs> that's <laughs> a bad that's idea. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. From that, anyway, we're going to go into our kicker. Um, we have two. The first one is a Galaxy S2 powered Cube Stormer. Oh, um, and basically, some guy took uh, Lego Mindstorm and he made a thing that will so- solve a Rubik's Cube um, using a Galaxy S phone as the uh, brains to control in the camera. So basically, they, they, he takes it, he mixes it all up, and he puts it into this contraption. And you just see it, just in a, within a couple seconds, solves it. It's but actually now, but very. Now look at this cube. Are you going to play it for us? Go for it, please. You, look at this cube actually go in of this machine and come up. That was just so you're awesome. just wait, waiting for the mixer to. I mean, click, this is click, click, just, it's just awesome. So it's using the camera in the phone and the yeah. software is running on the phone. Yes. So is it then? Then interfacing with the Mindstorm. Well, yeah, it must really is via the USB thing because they now opened up all the specifications so you can write the modules to speak to whatever from. But look at it, look at it go down. That's the coolest for me. It actually and goes there, into the machine, gets solved in what? 3.4, 5, 5.3 yes, seconds. seconds. Done. And then it, look at it now come up again as soon as YouTube catches mm. up. Look, look up. That's the best. That's beautiful. Sorry. That's just cool. Not just know, grab and go. I can now <laughs> say with certainty that the smartphone is brighter and faster than me. <laughs> I think this is what I've established. <laughs> I use a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I talked about that. You also get the guys who run the like uh, Rubik's Cube competitions, and in that, one of the things they do is blindfold it. And they get it, so they get handed it, they get to look at it, then they put a blindfold on, and then they time how quickly they take to solve it. Oh, no. And there's a couple guys who do this. It's... I'll buy this machine rather, really. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you really try and try and it's like, it's like look! <laughs> um, Take you longer to hand it to the machine. Yeah, it's kind of the problem. next thing is, is, is uh, and this is the last one, is, is somebody basically turning noses into Ninja Turtles. And they've dedicated a Tumblr blog to this. They take any photo. And, and they can see how they can convert the nose into, in, into a Ninja Turtle. This is just... <laughs> You know, <laughs> some people have too much time on their Thank hands. you. Why don't we have this type of thumbs on our hands? Huh? I love it. I love How it. many hits of this site? Can, can we get a hit counter on that site? What have they said? <laughs> no, no, I'm no, sure no, it's, it's do. doing quite well because it's been actually we, we going around Twitter Alexa, quite a bit recently. And um, Hey, he looks better. I, I love the... <laughs> <laughs> he as well. <laughs> I love, I love the, the subtitle. You know blogs have a title and a subtitle. Mm. And the subtitle of this blog is God is the Artist. I just find the Ninja Turtle in his work. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. Uh, the reason why we don't have time is we, we're doing 20 million other things as well. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, we're going to end. I just want to say thank you to Rudolf for, for joining us tonight. Thanks for the invitation. Great, great I really appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Jan. Pleasure. Uh, Johan. Sorry, that's what I said. It's Jan, Johan, <laughs> uh, myself, Tom Hawk, and the mixer. Uh, we're going to say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.